Hey guys, in this video, we're going to tackle tree sitter, LSP, and completion. And with the help of these three things, hopefully we'll be able to get close to an IDE-like experience using modern NeoVim features. So without further ado, let's get started. The, the first thing is tree sitter. What does tree sitter do? What is tree sitter? You can think of tree sitter as a way in which NeoVim is able to understand the contents of the file in a better way. Historically, what plugins have done is use some form of regex to match and figure out, okay, this is a function, these are the contents of the function, this is where the function ends. But with the help of TreeSitter and some language uh, specifications for it, NeoVim is now able to understand exactly what all the functions in the file are, and when you change something, it doesn't really rely on regex-based parsing again, it doesn't have to reparse the entire file. It's a lot faster, it's a lot more efficient, it's a lot more accurate, and it can even deal with like multiple languages in a single file, as we'll, we'll see. Given that it has this understanding, it allows you to do things like more impressive folding, it allows you to do better syntax highlighting, and some other benefits as well. So l let's just get started with TreeSitter to begin with. So we start again where we left off with our NeoVim Lua-based configuration videos, and we start off by going to the packages file, where we'll now first introduce a dependency on TreeSitter. We can introduce TreeSitter by just copying and pasting. Use nvim treesitter slash nvim treesitter. And now that we have it, we can start by creating a Packer sync, and it's installed. So by itself, it's not actually enabled. You actually have to manually enable this using a piece of code that they define if you go to this GitHub page, but I've copied it here for you. So we can do something like, um, so what are we doing here? We're, we're setting up NeoVim tracer configs and we're calling the setup method. And when we call the setup method that way, it will essentially be enabled. Now, there's a few different configuration options here. We say that, okay, only use parsers that are well-maintained, and then we're going to enable it for two things here. We're going to enable it for highlighting, and actually we're also going to enable it for indentation. So with these two pieces of configuration, it will be using TreeSitter for this highlighting, and it will also use TreeSitter for indentation, because it turns out you can use it to provide more smarter indentation, especially in more complicated code files. So. When you launch TreeSitter again with this, you'll see at the bottom of your screen that TreeSitter is now um, installing parsers for all these different languages, and it'll also install a parser for Lua. So now that these have been installed, um, you'll notice that the uh, you'll notice that it fixed the 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 syntax highlighting on this. Previously, the top and the end and the start of this function had different syntax uh, coloring, had different coloring, and that's because the default syntax highlighting provided by NeoVim was not smart enough to figure out that this end was related to this local function here, but now this is a lot smarter. You can you can skip back in the video and check it out and see how this is fixed. So highlighting is fixed. Now the second thing we're going to try out is the folding capability of uh, TreeSitter here. So you see if I do try to fold it, it says no fold found. Um, if I set the fold method to be something like uh, syntax, by default, even though still it has no fold found, so there's no folding capability right now that I have, but I'm going to enable it with TreeSitter. So I can do that by copying. So I can enable this by saying the vim fold method should be expression, and you can actually find the expression by NeoVim TreeSitter fold expression. And let's close this, and let's reopen it. And you'll notice that when I launch it, it's already folded, which is which is pretty cool. It was able to fold based off of this uh, configuration, and you can see that it's smart enough. It understands um, where all it should things should fold, and it's pretty cool. I can open it, fold it. It's it's pretty cool. Okay, awesome. So. TreeSitter has sort of given us a base. Um, there are other functionalities of TreeSitter, and like you can see some plugins which allow for smarter commenting, especially in like more complicated, uh, more complicated source files, which are a mix of different languages and like other features. 
but essentially this this folding and syntax highlighting it's it's going to be used in our in our IDE like experience and tree sitter is just the better way of doing things here with the use of its abstract syntax tree and the use of its better parsing so let's just move on to the LSP and continue with our IDE like setup experience now the first thing to understand about LSPs is what they do provide and what they don't provide. A lot of people when they start using the NeoVim LSP config um, they find that they have to actually pull in other things like tree sitter and like completion as we'll see later and these are all things that are provided out of the box in a single experience by something like COC that we if you've seen my video on C++ developer experience uh, you will development experience you will have noticed that but with an LSP config, the purpose of the LSP config is to integrate with a language server provided by some other third party in the backend. And basically NeoVim's LSP config allows us to integrate with that in a native way. Instead of using a third party plugin, it has better support. So, and other benefits as well. Now, we can install the LSP config by, by itself and it requires some configuration to integrate it with different types of uh, LSPs. So we'll actually use something like an LSP installer in addition to that in order to help us get started and so we don't have to actually go about finding and installing different sort of uh, LSPs manually. I will have a follow-up video on a C++ development experience but for the purposes of this video I'm going to use this and showcase this on Lua files and the Lua language. So uh, without further ado, let's just get started. So the first thing we need to do is, oops, let me enable which key. Yeah, the first thing we need to do is to go back to our, oh, this, you can see this is actually pretty cool. Um, the folding from TreeSitter is already showing its use. Um, it's cleaning up the file. I don't have to worry about a more complicated setup here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, oops, I could just do this. So we're going to integrate with NeoVim's LSP config. And we are also going to use the LSP installer. So when we Packer sync these, these will be both be installed. So now that both of these are installed, um, we will start using them. But again, like TreeSitter, we actually have to enable them. We have to configure them before they can be used. So we will do that by using setting up this configuration portion here. So all we have to do is um, set up the LSP installer and we'll have it configure and we'll have it set up and we'll have it set up its operations and we'll call this setup method. This essentially calls the NeoVim LSP setup method with some extra stuff. So the next time we start up Vim again, we can actually use LSP install to install stuff and we can say to install LSP. So in this case, we want to install it for Lua. Um, and you'll notice that it'll give you different options and you can look, go to the GitHub file for um, the GitHub page for this uh, LSP installer, if we search for it um, and go to the GitHub page for this, um, you'll notice that they have a table here which will tell you that for the different languages um, all the different server names that are available. So in our case, yes for Lua, Sumneka Lua is the, what we want, so we'll just do one and it will start installing it and you'll notice that it has installed uh, Sumneka Lua for us. Okay, awesome. And we can quit this and we can launch our... So now it's installed, but what is it doing? And right away you'll notice that it is enabled. Basically, it started showing us warnings, undefined global Vim, because it, uh, it's just a default. By default, it's just a Lua-based thing. So if I say something like, if I just do something like this, um, it'll say, oh, this is an undefined global. What am I doing here? It's, it's a warning here, but maybe I do something like this. Now, that's pretty cool already. Um, we can call our function. Okay, we can. We want to be able to jump to definitions. We want to be able to find references. We want to be able to find documentation. Uh, and we obviously want to be able to see errors like this inline in the file, which is pretty cool. So um, let's configure those things. Um, uh, the next thing we want to set up is some sort of key maps here. So. Um, we can configure some key maps here and I'll go over each of these in a sec. Now I've copied all these key bindings into my keybindings.lua file and um, we basically created another method that will help us um, just define normal key maps with certain options. 
So let's go through these a bit. So it gives us, we can jump to a definition, we can jump to a declaration, we can jump to an implementation, um, we can look up some symbols, we can find references to something, we can even go to the type definition um, and it'll provide a hover. If we do shift K, it'll give us documentation in line with the hover card kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, and then there's for code actions and renames. Now, note that not all LSPs will provide in all circumstances all of these um, as working things that you can use. So um, we'll go through the, some Neko Lua stuff and we'll see which ones of these um, are provided and which ones work and which ones don't. So let's do that. So when we relaunch NeoVim, um, we can go down to this function that we called, that we defined up above, and we can do gd to jump to the definition. And it'll jump us to the definition, which is pretty cool. All right, so what else do we have? Um, can we jump to the implementation for this? So gi, you'll notice that implementation is not supported by any of the servers registered for this current buffer. So there's no concept of implementation here. There's just jump to definition here. And even something like jump to the declaration will also be not supported essentially. Um, but other cool things we can do is we can do um, find all references to it, which is pretty cool. We can say that we it is found in two places in this line. We can, there's no type definition, that doesn't work, but we can do shift K to see uh, the documentation around this function in line, which is pretty cool. And if I create a, this, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is a cool function. Um, this should show up as part of the documentation, which you can see that it does, which is pretty awesome. Awesome, okay. And what else do we have? We can also rename it, yes, so we can do leader rn, and oh yeah, we misnamed this to be blah o instead of blah, so we can delete that and we can fix it, and you'll notice that it was fixed in both places, which is pretty cool. Now, the one final thing I'll talk about in the uh, configuration here for the LSP is this: uh, these warnings that on Lua files around like vim also being an undefined global, and you'll notice if we go to the packages file, um, it'll say that use is also an undefined global. And we can fix that. Basically, the default Lua configuration doesn't understand it, so we can fix that by going and configuring this option specifically for some Nick Lua, and we can say that, okay, here's a few globals that we, we want to be not bothered with. So um, we can copy and paste this portion here, and you'll notice that. And we can... Just press equal to make them sure they're all highlighted properly. This is actually not needed. So all we're doing here is we're saying whenever this server is configured with some Neko Lua, and this method will be called for every LSP configuration that you've set up. So um, in this case, for the options, we want settings. And in those settings, we want Lua diagnostics, and we want the globals uh, Vim and use to be considered. So um, when I save it, and if I rerun it and reopen it, it doesn't give us those same warnings again. And even in the packages file, you'll notice that there are no warnings again, which is pretty cool. Now, a, something like, okay, yeah, so that this is an error in this case. Um, you'll notice that it's all set up to whenever I go from insert mode to normal mode. I'm sure you can configure it so that it's almost constant. There is a lag here in this case, which I, I do prefer sometimes that uh, I don't want while I'm typing for there to be constantly, okay, this is not valid, this is not valid. So uh, I like the fact that whenever it switches from insert mode to normal mode, that's when it uh, showcases the errors in line. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so that's essentially it for the LSP section here. Um, I will have a more complicated setup for my C++ setup because uh, you'll notice that I set up a video around um, configuring C++ as an IDE with COC and that was pretty detailed. It included stuff like um, integrating with CMake, with Google Test, with File Explorer. And so uh, I want to do a remake of that essentially with NeoVim LSP, um, but uh, I'm still in the process of figuring out the, especially the CMake integration portions. Cool. Now, one final thing we'll touch on in this video, which is already getting pretty long, is completions.
Now we usually we want the ability to be able to auto complete. Now by default, NeoVim has its own auto completion. So if I do Control P, it's auto complete, which is pretty cool. It just is Control keyword completion, and it finds other words in the buffer in order to auto complete this. Obviously, we all want language based proper auto completion, which you know pulls from other files, pulls from other libraries, and so um, that is accomplished using a third portion, which is in this case, which we'll use um, NeoVim completion. So let's jump right into it. Now for a completion, we will use a plugin called nvim-cmp. This is one of the recommended plugins by the NeoVim LSP team. So even though this is um, still a work in progress, um, it's, it's going to be good enough for a bunch of the things that we want from an LSP. And now they've given us a pretty big configuration here. And you can see that the configuration uses a vim plug here. So we'll just copy that and there's some stuff for snippets and we're not using snippets yet. So we're just going to copy everything else except for the snippets. We're already using the NeoVim LSP config. So we can just go into our packages and we can go at the bottom of it and we can just copy paste these. Um, and instead of plug, all we want to do is replace the word plug with um, use. And oh, by the way, this is a cool feature of NeoVim 0.6. So if you update to the latest, you can see that this is, it shows previews before the things have actually updated. So now it's actually updated, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so we have set these up um, based off of the recommended, all these things that they suggested we install. And now we can do Vim and we can do PackerSync, which will install all of them for us. And finally, we have to also do the configuration that they recommend. So this is this entire um, configuration set up here. So we will all we will do is we will copy this. Um, we won't copy the snippet portion because we're not doing snippets yet. Um, so let's see. So we have configuration set up. And in addition, we want the mappings. We want the sources as well. In our case, we want the NeoVim LSP source. And we want our buffer to be used. Um, we also want our LSP configure integration with this. So let's copy this and let's paste this. Awesome. So what have we done here so far? We don't care about vSNP. We don't care about all of these other things. All we care about is NeoVim LSP and the buffer completion as a source, obviously, um, which is pretty cool. And the final thing here, um, they say to replace your underscore LSP underscore server with um, the LSP server you've enabled. So in our case, that is Subneco underscore Lua. Awesome. So what happens if we relaunch Vim now? Cool, nothing so far. Vim, okay. And now when we start typing in words, we can see that, oh, it's all, already auto-completing. Break is a keyword provided by, obviously, Lua. It's a syntax. It's part of the Lua syntax. And then blah is the function that we defined up above. So we can do blah, and it will complete, which is cool. And obviously, we can just use GD to jump to the definition as well. So go back, jump to definition, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can see that configs was a variable that we've defined up here. So there's a configs variable. Um, if we do capabilities, that's also a variable that's defined. So these are all the basic uh, completion functions that um, are provided here. So um, we finally have a completion engine that we can use while we're doing our coding setup. If I tried to do something like require, and you can see that it also references stuff like uh, I can require IO and basic and math and stuff. So um, at least we have the most basic level of completion working. I know it doesn't work across these require functions, but regardless, um, this is a very basic level of configuration using TreeSitter, NeoVim LSP, and a completion plugin. Now, everything you see here, everything that I've configured, everything that I've coded is all available on codebian.github.io, and you can go into the TreeSitter, LSP, and completions. And this is uh, the most basic setup that uh, you can configure. Obviously, we will want more complicated setups for things like web dev, for things like C++ development, and I'll have those videos coming up in the future. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe.